Well, hello there and welcome in to the latest edition of Three Dog Thursday as part of the Winning Cures Everything platform of shows, the Winning Cures Everything a YouTube page, social media, also winningcures.com. I am the somewhat competent host, TJ Reeves. And wait a minute, I've got a stand in. I, I've got, I, I'm going through famous backups. Like if you go old school NFL, which my guy that I'm about to bring on loves, would I be like Don Strock to a Dan Marino? Would you be like a Danny White to a Roger Staubach? Who's feeling me on the all time backups? I don't know about the present day backups if they're good, if they're that good. But from the college football experience, a phenomenal show and podcast. Uh, if you want to break down college football, Colby Dan and his guys are all over it from out on the West Coast as part of the Sp- Sports Gambling Podcast Network of Shows. Uh, but look, the TCE, the college experience is phenomenal on its own. Hello, my left coast college football brother from another mother, Colby Dant. Thank you for hanging on Three Dog Thursday, the video show and the podcast. Good to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. I like to consider myself more of a Steve DeBerg. You know? Yes, yes. DeBerg, the... Uh, the uh, second chair to some of the greats like Joe Montana, like John Elway, Vinny Testaverde, not so much in Tampa Bay, but yes, Steve DeBerg, phenomenal. True story as we totally digress on Three Dog Thursday. TJ, before getting married, I'm going third person, late 1990s. I'm living in a uh, kind of upscale apartment complex in North Tampa. Steve DeBerg had not yet retired. He was still playing late in the 90s with the Atlanta Falcons almost ran over me in the parking lot of my apartments because I was going to check the mail, Colby, up in the front. Here comes DeBerg and like one of the old school Suburbans that you used to see in the 90s, like OJ was driving around in uh, on the LA freeways. I almost got run over by Steve DeBerg, claim to claim to fame. So thank you for bringing that up as a great backup. I I, I love it. I'm, I'm here, though, to tell the story. Uh, I wish some... I could say the same, <laughs> but I can't. I can't, man. But what, that is a great story. I don't know where he was going, but he was in a big hurry. And I'm like, my God, that's DeBerg. And he almost hit me. Uh, but in any, <laughs> in any, in any event, uh, thank you for hanging out here. I know you guys have a blast. Uh, you and Patty C and NC Nick and uh, and uh, and the college experience. You're on five days a week breaking down college football. Now I know we're going underdog specific on Three Dog Thursday, but you break it all down, dozens and dozens and dozens of games with handicapping angles, favorites, underdogs, totals, all of it, and the season well underway, my friend. Yeah, every single game we touch we touch on, and and I also I also host the FCS College Football Experience, so we go deep. So check us out. Yeah, no doubt. Wherever you get podcasts, YouTube channel as well, the College Experience as part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network and their shows. Love those guys. All right, so what we do here is we do underdogs. And last week, how about this? A five and one week on Three Dog Thursday. With my colleague, the guy behind Winning Cures Everything, Gary Seegers, going not one, not two, but three for three with his underdogs. Now, he had to skate by with a couple of them, a narrow cover for Jacksonville State against Coastal Carolina, and Stanford, and, uh, Cal, excuse me, kept it just close enough with Auburn in the lost at home. But they all count, Colby, they all count. And so he went three for three. I went two and one. Uh, last week on the program, thank you very much, Washington State, for the outright uh, win as well in the Pac-12 for last week. So a five and one week on the show. Again, Gary is not here uh, for this week with a very good reason, Colby Dant, because his wife Jessica gave birth uh, to their daughter Murphy Jean. So uh, bravo to Jessica, the rock of the family yeah. there, giving birth to daughter uh, Gary's third child. Uh, congratulations, Gary. So, uh, again, we say thanks to everybody at Winning Cures. He's a new dad again. That's why he's not here on the show taking care of father duties. Now, he did say to me that later in the week, as we release on Thursday, he might have some content out on winningcureseverything.com. But for right now, he's taking care of the baby. And Colby Dan, are we breaking news or is this out there that my man, the Colby D on social media, you and Bride are expecting, you have procreated, and we got a little college football fan on the way. Yes, a little Dundee on the way. And, uh, yeah, I want to congratulate, uh, you know, the, y- your your co-host, Gary. Yep. Paul, Gary and, uh, you know, nothing. I'm sure that's going to be fantastic when you're trying to handicap games and change diapers. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that challenge. Wait, but, yeah. wait, Florida's in the red zone on Tennessee with a baby screaming. No, 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 we got to get the cover. <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about that game coming up, but yes, uh, by the way, I should mention Colby is AKA pick Dundee. What do you like to say on your show? That's what is it? That's not a pick. This is a pick. Yes. No doubt on the college football uh, experience. Yes. 
So when is uh, Mama Pick Dundee due? Uh, how soon? In the season? Uh, well, no, late late January. I try to wait to the end of the college football season. I strategize. Uh, you know, sorry, Gary. You, know, yeah, you just, uh, you know, you're just going in. But well, no, uh, he he was he was trying to have the baby before the season began. But obviously, uh, the math, the the, the baby's delay. It, it had to end up being a September baby after we already got some games out of the way. After we already saw see, the tough some thing early here, season though. action. The tough thing here, though, is that, that means her birthday every single September. You know, with, with, <laughs> with birthday Florida parties. State. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like while we totally digress on Three Dog Thursday, just for one more moment, when my wife and I were kicking around getting married, and you know, I've been married a while. I've been married now 27 years. She's like, we're going we're gonna to try to get married in uh, October. No. Are we going to try to get married in February? No. Are we going to go in it? No, not in April. No, no. Uh, we're going to go in May or June. Take a pick in May or June because almost nothing other than baseball or some maybe basketball NBA playoffs is going on in May or June. So voila, May, yeah. May in our house. Look, we I, planned I it out. Know, I want to know because I know you weren't just saying the truth. Like, no, the March Madness is my uh, – you were probably <laughs> saying, no, you know, the – the weather's not good in in, in, in uh, wherever you got married. No, in March? no, she, no. She she understood uh, right away when she met me for the first time over thirty years ago. March is out every weekend. This dude's <laughs> doing nothing but watching college basketball, no matter what it is. So just put an X, red X, through March on a calendar. Rule that out. It's like an eleven month calendar uh, when it comes to us. Uh, so anyway. Uh, congrats to you on expecting. Uh, again, thank you for finding us on Winning Cures Everything, the platform. If you're only hearing us on the Three Dog Thursday podcast feed, come find the video, winningcureseverything.com, Winning Cures Everything YouTube page, where you can see the show. You can come and engage uh, here with us and with all the picks, the insight and the analysis. So we love that. So a five and one week a week ago, we're looking for underdogs only to cover. They don't have to outright win. Winning would be a bonus. We're only looking to cover. We're going with the lines midweek. Line goes up or goes down Thursday, Friday. Gary uh, Gary and I, Colby and I, we don't know that. So we're going with what we have as we release the podcast and the video show on Thursday. With that out of the way, uh, my friend, you're going to get the honors. You're going to lead off over and over and over again. Tell me where you want to go for three dog Thursday purposes to begin things. And it's not even a Saturday dog. Don't have to wait till Saturday. What do you like and why? Oh, I'm taking you to uh, Colorado Springs and look, uh, air force has lost their last two to Utah state. That's when they had Brad Roberts, who I like to say, John Riggins 2.0 and, uh, and Hazik Daniels. I had an opportunity to go to mountain West day. I had an opportunity uh, or media days and I had an opportunity to sit down with Troy Calhoun and uh, he was not very bullish on his team this year because of losing that much production, you know, at the service academies, that means a lot. And you have the new NCAA rules. Now air force is still two and zero, but they beat a terrible Robert Morris FCS team. That was, I think, I think winless a year ago, if memory serves me correct. And then they, they got by Sam Houston, but Sam Houston covered, I think it was 13 to three uh, Sam Houston, making the jump from the FCS to the FBS this year. Y- meanwhile, Utah state, uh, I thought they played Iowa fairly well. 20, uh, you know, to, what a 10 point loss to, to the Iowa Hawkeyes in Iowa city. Then they bounce back and play Idaho state. Who's not a good FCS, but Idaho state week one only lost by one score at San Diego state. And last mm-hmm. week, last week, the Utah state Aggies put up 78 points against Idaho state. Hello. Yeah. yeah. They got a dual threat quarterback named Cooper Lagasse that slight, Slight, uh, you know, memories of uh, Mark Brunel, a young Mark Brunel or, uh, or Steve this. Young when you when you watch this kid play. So I think Utah State with this offense that they got are not only a, a, a live dog. I mean, I, I even like the money line play here mm. because, because the fact that you got Lagasse, also Terrell Vaughn, their wide receiver, has 23 catches in two games. Get so someone's gonna have to guard him. And the fact that Air Force has the the NCAA rule changes are going against them and the fact that they're just not very experienced on the offensive side of the ball. Defensive side of the ball, Air Force is still solid, but I think this is going to be a game. Uh, I'm getting, uh, what, nine and a half points. Give me Utah State up there in Colorado Springs to not only not only cover, I think they can win outright. The last time they went to Colorado Springs, they did win. So I like this play. Uh, again, that game is an eight Eastern time game, six mountain time Friday night game. So as we release things on the video show and on the podcast, be ready for it. You're getting double figures and Colby says, be careful. The Aggies may be able to win this game against the Air Force Falcons. 
Uh, so we look forward to seeing what's going to happen there with underdog game number one, which is Utah State. All right, let's move on to Saturday, and I am not going to wait at all. I'm looking at a Saturday noon game right off the bat, Eastern time, nine in the West. And by the way, we should mention Colby loves to do live programming Saturday morning. He gets his coffee. He gets his Danish, his muffin, whatever other uh, pharmaceuticals he needs. And he just goes on Saturday, starting at like eight or 9 a.m. local time. And you're still going like almost at midnight Pacific time. I think when it's all over with post game analysis, it's an all day Saturday buffet of Colby and uh, Patty the C and Nick Nick and everybody on the college experience. So go check them out on Saturday. So this is a nine Pacific time, 11 local time in Champaign, Illinois, big noon kickoff. It is the big noon kickoff game from Fox national television. Penn state comes in as a 14 and a half point favorite. And rightfully so because Illinois shaky week one in a win over Toledo, Holy Toledo last second field goal, then beaten by Kansas last week. But I love the spot. Colby, we talk so many times about the spot. I love them at home, early game. Penn State, we're going to talk about in a second, but Illinois now has some people uh, criticizing them. Now you band together as a team. They did some good things in the second half of the game against Kansas that they can maybe build on. I think 14 and a half is too many points here for an early Saturday game in Champaign. Do you feel me even a touch? on Three Dog Thursday for Illinois fighting Illini. Oh, oh I, I love it because you're telling me Drew Aller's first ever road game. I mean, you love to 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 fade to fade quarterbacks on their first ever road trip, especially to one that's a decent team. Now, Illinois had the top defense in the country last year. Obviously, they lose their defensive coordinator to Purdue, Ryan Walters. But uh, I do think they went out and hired Jim Leonard as a defensive assistant, and I think that defense is going to get better each and every week. And, I I don't fault them for for you know losing to Jalen Daniels in Kansas because I think Jalen Daniels is one of the, like the top ten best quarterbacks in America, so I, I think they'll have a better shot to rattle Drew Aller uh, in Champaign with the crowd behind them. And then I do think the offensive side of the ball they can stretch the field a little more than a season ago. Now the run game's not there yet. That's one of the things. That's one of the red flags. You know, normally bielma has got that bell cow running back where they can just right uh, you know get there and, and and they after losing Chase Brown. It hasn't emerged yet, but I will say that Luke Altmaier has opened up the passing attack. Uh, this is the best passing attack I've seen in, from the Illini. He can throw yeah. it, and he yeah. was and he was pretty good last week. I'm looking at the stats against Kansas. He was 19 of 28, but he also took off on a 72 yard touchdown <laughs> run to the point, and that may have surprised some people that he's got that kind of wheels to go to the house 70 yards and out. Again, I saw the Penn State game, you know this, against West Virginia week one. LeVar Arrington and I did the game on national radio on Compass Media Networks. Aller was good. The two-headed running backs are good with Singleton, Catron Allen in the backfield. Uh, Keandre Lambert-Smith, they all they always have a little small speed receiver. Uh, who was the kid? K.J. Hamlin recently. They had Bobby. I, you're speaking my language, and I'm speaking yours. Bobby Ingram back in the day was oh, yeah. the smallest oh, yeah. Penn State yeah. receiver. I can even go O.J. McDuffie if we need to go O.J. <laughs> McDuffie and Penn State. All right, so they've got weapons. I'm not saying that Illinois wins this game, but 14 and a half, just one more time, real quick, seems like too much here. I'm taking the Illini. One, one final thought. Yeah, I agree. And look, Brett Bielma is one and zero against James Franklin at Illinois. Remember, they won that crazy game in like nine overtimes in Happy Valley uh, a couple years ago. Correct. I, I think you take the points, and I yeah, I wouldn't even. I don't even think a, a that that was the game. That, that was the game that set overtime football back decades because they they had instituted the new rule, which they currently have, which is starting in the third overtime, you just run plays from the two yard line. And yeah. over and over again, Illinois and Penn State could not get in the end zone from the two-yard line. Ineptitude like you can't believe until <laughs> Illinois finally scored it like the 57th two-point overtime. And they got the two-pointer and they stopped Penn State and they won the game. So good memory on that. I'll take the Illini for an early Saturday doggy. All right, to the Saturday doggies that you like, and you like the first ever Big 12 game for the Houston Cougars as an underdog. Tell me more about why they make three dog Thursday for you, Colby Dan. Well, you know, I, I was on uh, Colorado as a 21 and a half point dog, or I'm sorry, set plus 775 week, week one against uh, TCU. And mainly because TCU wow. lost so many pieces a year ago. And they played in like, I feel like if you watch TCU last year, they had like every game was like a, a three point game. 
So when you lose Duggan, when you lose Johnson, when you lose those running backs, when you lose a lot of key defensive players, uh, I just think it's a brand new football team. I can't just say, oh, they're national championship quality. No, I don't buy into that. And at the, at the same time, I think the Houston Cougars, I I, uh, I I was lucky enough to to hop on a Houston Cougar podcast this offseason, and I know they were saying their ticket sales are higher than they've ever been. They're super excited to be back. Remember, they played for a national championship in the 70s, and it feels like after that, things just went downhill, even the party era, and I they couldn't get back into the, 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 the party essentially the, the, the power five. And now that now they are, this is their, their first ever power five game uh, in the modern era. And I think this place is going to be rocking. And I also thought, you know, I, I, a lot, a lot of the uh, publications and stuff that has released preseason stuff really didn't give a lot of respect to, I thought Cincinnati, UCF, Houston, and BYU. I thought those programs were ready to make those jumps and Holgerson brings in Donovan Smith, a former Texas Tech starting quarterback for a couple of years, uh, dual threat. And then you add in Tony Mathis, the the, the running back from uh, West Virginia, Joseph Manjack, a wide out from USC who transferred in. And I just feel like the team is better. Now, they did lose to Rice last uh, they yes, beat they UT, did. But, and, and I was on the Rice Owls last week, but that game was crazy because Rice went up 28 nothing. Houston scored 28 unanswered and then lost in overtime. It was just a back and forth game, but I actually think, you know, I, I, I know the alumni are probably not happy with Holgerson losing that game, but I think Rice is a bowl team this year. I don't think that loss is as bad as people believe. Uh, I think they bounced back and I thought it was a bad spot. They had just beaten UTSA who came in with preseason hype and, and they, they, we know that they had TCU on deck first ever big 12 game. So I thought Rice caught them at the right spot. I think they bounced back. I don't know that TCU has an identity to who they want to be. Garrett Riley's gone. Kendall Bryles comes in. I'm not sold on, on Chandler Morris. Uh, so I think they're kind of a mess right now. I think Houston catches them at the right spot. I like them to uh, cover, and I like them to win it on the money line. And again, uh, this used to be an old Southwest Conference rivalry, which is what you were alluding to, where they played every year, and then it kind of went away because they were vagabonds in different conferences. TCU got in the Big 12 before Houston could get in the Big 12, and they're not too far removed from Tom Herman's team uh, making it uh, into a New Year's Six Bowl game and beating Florida State, remember? So that was recent. So uh, Holgo has got to has got to get them rolling off the loss to Rice in the double overtime. This is, again, they're going to be jacked at home for the Big 12 opener. And Colby says, give me the seven and a half is what we're looking at uh, right now for the Houston Cougars for three dog Thursday purposes against TCU against Texas Christian uh, coming up in that matchup on Saturday. We owe you three more underdogs on the show as part of three dog Thursday. Thank you for finding us on the video show. Or if you're only hearing us on the audio podcast, by the way, we've got a tremendous sponsor as part of what we're doing here for three dog Thursday and the winning cures, everything brand ticket smarter and the ticket smarter mobile app. Are you looking to go to these games? Are you looking to go to Houston TCU? Are you looking in my part of the world? Oh my Lord at the swamp, Florida and Tennessee coming up Saturday night. Colby wants to talk backyard brawl before we're done. Pitt West Virginia. Virginia. If you're going to any of these games all over the place, use our friends at Ticket Smarter and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. They have the uh, the best competitive pricing on the secondary market. They have a great algorithm that keeps you in line with what the best pricing is for any of these great seats at Ticket Smarter. Your purchase is always safe and secure with Ticket Smarter and guaranteed. And we've got a promo code for you. If you're trying to get into that Florida Tennessee game, good luck to get in for under 150 bucks right now. I just looked for the game at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on Saturday night. If you're trying to get into the backyard brawl at West Virginia, again, you're going to spend anywhere from 100 or 150 to get in. That's just to get in. For the good seats, you're looking at four, five, six hundred dollars. Use our promo code on Ticket Smarter WCE for winning cures everything. WCE20. Any purchase of three hundred dollars or more, you're going to spend three hundred dollars on a ticket. Practically, if you get two of them, uh, you're definitely going to spend three hundred. WCE20 takes 20 bucks off your order with our promo code through Ticket Smarter. Utilize it right now. Some of you have already been doing that. You've been satisfied. You've gotten some kind of a discount. Get a discount on these tickets all over the country. Penn State, Illinois, again, any of the Pac-12 games that are going to be going on, whether it's Oregon or USC or whoever else is in action, SEC games, Alabama is coming to my part of the world playing Mrs. Reeves in the other room, Colby, as we tape. Mrs. Reeves is a South Florida Bull. The Bulls. Anyway, the Bulls in the green and gold. 
get there for the pregame because Alabama's going to be angry. They're pissed off about losing to Texas. They're going to probably take it out on USF. But right now, the get-in price is skyrocketing for Alabama and USF. It's a tough ticket with a ton of Alabama fans here in the Tampa Bay area for that Saturday afternoon game. Use Ticket Smarter and the mobile app, promo code WCE20. WCE20 takes 20 bucks off a $300 or more uh, order or a, uh, an offer for the tickets. Do that right now to any of the games. Use that promo code as much as you want. All season long, it's not restricted to one use. Use it as much as you want. College football, NFL, concerts, NASCAR, it's all on Ticket Smarter and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. Again, WCE20 takes 20 bucks off with Ticket Smarter. Get in the game. Think smarter, Ticket Smarter. So there you go on that. All right, let's move on, shall we? Speaking of the Pac-12, let's continue on Three Dog Thursday. Why am I staring down the Arizona State Sun Devils at home with the Fresno State Bulldogs? Colby Dan, you're out in the West. You're based in Southern California. Pac-12 has disintegrated all around you. We've lived long enough for the Pac-12. It used to be the Pac-8. It used to be the Pac-10 to now only have two teams after this season. Is it going to survive? It doesn't look like it. But Arizona State is one of the teams that's on the move to the Big 12. Arizona State at home last week, beaten by Oklahoma State. But now they play a Fresno team that, although they're 2-0, and they kind of squeaked by Eastern Washington last week. I'm staring right at the Sun Devils and uh, this quarterback, Rashada, uh, who played decently last week in the game with Oklahoma State. I'm looking at Arizona State ASU getting three points Saturday night in Tempe. And I'm liking that for Three Dog Thursday purposes. Care to back me off backing that underdog with Arizona State and the new coach, uh, Kenny Dillingham? I mean, I can see your angle. Rashada looks like he's going to be the real deal. But I don't know. I think Fresno. I think Fresno gets up for those Power 5 games. Purdue found out week one. UCLA at the Rose Bowl a couple years ago. And I I like Jeff Tedford as a coach. Mikey Keene, the former UCF quarterback there. I can see this being a field goal game. You might you might get this, but at the end of the day, I think I lean Fresno. Again, Fresno, as you mentioned, week one, won the game over Purdue in a high-scoring game. Arizona State struggled. What was it? Southern Utah and the game had the dust yeah. storm, had the weather <laughs> delay. We had like, uh, we were consulting the Old Testament. We had plagues. We had locusts. We had uh, the sea turning to blood. We had everything biblical, and they still persevered and won that game. And again, they were in the game with Oklahoma State until the Cowboys pulled away, if, 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 in the uh, in the fourth quarter, especially of that game. I, just something says to me they can win this game. The Sun Devils here in the matchup uh, with a Mountain West team. And you may you may get used to seeing, I, I know uh, Arizona State's leaving the Pac-12, but the Mountain West and Oregon State and Washington State, they may become common teams uh, now that are playing each other. So this is just an interesting spot uh, for Jeff Tedford's team to go on the road late night, Saturday night, again, 1030 Eastern time. I will take ASU, the Sun Devils. My wife's cousin, Trevor, a big ASU guy, he was back there last week for the Okie State game, and they lost. He was back there for a wedding. Shout out to Trevor Zero here on the podcast as big an ASU fan. I went to an ASU upset of Washington about five years ago. It was the Saturday night before the Buccaneers played the Cardinals, and Trevor got me in in his section with all of his people, and my God, were they going bonkers in Tempe. I don't know if they rekindled all of that, Colby Dant, last Saturday night. It didn't work against Oklahoma State. But nonetheless, I'll back the Sun Devils here plus the three with Fresno State for Three Dog Thursday purposes. We are almost done. And are you and I about to agree on an underdog here to wrap it up for Three Dog Thursday? Are you staring my way? Not because I'm a good-looking male model. I'm not. Are you staring my way because I live in the Sunshine State? What is up? What do you like for a final underdog? I mean, I think you got to go to the swamp. I feel like, you know, if anybody saw the Austin P Tennessee game, uh, there are some red flags. Now, I know that we, we could say, well, they were looking ahead, you know, but I'm not convinced the Virginia win was that impressive. I mean, I they, they opened it up in the second half, but the first half they had some struggles, and I think Virginia might be the worst power five in the country. Uh, so the, the Gators getting back to the swamp. I know people have been calling for Napier. You know, saying this is not the right guy. You can't. <laughs> and, and look, I'll be honest. Like, yeah, uh, his team was unprepared. Like, as far as false starts and 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 uh, two guys with the same jersey number, uh, multiple times in that game. But it's also at Rice Eccles, which I think is a low key one of the hardest places to get a win right. in America. So I I think you know they get back on the Napier train. Graham Mertz actually, 
I was somewhat impressed. I was somewhat impressed. I know, you know, they were down big. So maybe you can say, well, that's how the stats he put up, you know, accumulated. But uh, I, I kind of thought that, that, you know, he played pretty solid. I think they, the fact that Tennessee, I don't know if I'm buying into Joe Milton yet, especially uh, after, after watching last week. So I think the Gators are a live dog. And man, what is it? They've only Tennessee's only won at the swamp twice since 1971. That is correct. Yeah, and it's story times, yeah. story time for Uncle TJ because I'm going to back you. I'm going to say Florida Gators, yes, getting the six and a half in this matchup. And I got some numbers to, to put it up. The last time Tennessee won in the swamp in Gainesville, TJ in the house. That Ooh. was Phil Fulmer, Tennessee. Ron Zook, hello, Florida, <laughs> replacing Steve Spurrier. 2003, Casey Clawson, are you feeling me, Colby Dan, with a Hail Mary right before halftime, right in front of where we were sitting. We were TV right, about 15 rows up on about the 15-yard line. Here came the Hail Mary at halftime. Tennessee caught it, scored a touchdown. It helped propel them to the win. That's it. That's the last time they have won. They've only won twice since Richard Nixon became the president 50 years ago in the Swamp. I don't know what it is. It's a bugaboo uh, right now for Tennessee. I know they did uh, win the game uh, a year ago. Uh, two years ago, Florida put it on them uh, with uh, with Dan Mullen in the Swamp, uh, Josh Heupel's first year. Uh, that year. So uh, Tennessee just one in four in their last four meetings, ATS against Florida. Again, it's different players. Now I understand that, but that includes the last two years. Tennessee didn't cover in a high scoring game last year in Knoxville. They were getting 19 in the game in Gainesville, 19 points, two years ago, didn't cover, got beat by like 24 in that game Saturday night, Florida frothing. I think Florida may run the ball a little bit better in this matchup just to have your back here on this. Uh, I, I know Mertz has been a turnover machine, but they might try to run it a little more with Montrell Johnson and the running backs. Give me Florida to maybe even win this game outright. Gator mode. And I did not go to the University of Florida. I did not. Uh, let's see what happens with Florida and Tennessee in an SEC showdown. Hey, Peyton Manning used to quarterback uh, Tennessee in these matchups with Florida, and he never beat them once. Steve Spurrier had the famous line, you can't spell Citrus Bowl without UT, because every year Florida would beat Tennessee and go to the SEC title game, and, and Tennessee would go to the Citrus Bowl. So Peyton was over for everything that you see and all the accolades. He could never beat them. We'll see if it's any better for uh, for uh, Josh Heupel's team as they come into the swamp. But you and I in agreement for Three Dog Thursday purposes. All right, we have an honorable mention. You, uh, It doesn't really have an underdog, but the backyard brawl, Pitt and West Virginia renew the backyard brawl. It's the first time Pitt has been in Morgantown since 2011. And you, you want to relate something about the backyard brawl and just say something about that before we're done on Three Dog Thursday. Oh. I mean, folks, I'm so glad in this day and age where you just you just touched on the Pac-12 disintegrating or everyone, you know, and you you're losing the Civil War, you're losing the Apple Cup, and and I don't know that college football gets better because of that. I, if anything, I would make the argument that us losing these great rivalries makes it worse. The backyard brawl. I had an opportunity to go to this when they were in, still conference foes back in the early 2000s, and it was played right after Thanksgiving. It was Black Friday every year. Yeah, yeah. And that's honestly where it should be. But I'll t the fact that it hasn't happened in forever, I'll, I'll take what they what they give us on, on a week three matchup. But man, if you get a chance to go to this game, this is the epitome of college football. The hatred for the passion yes. on both sides of the fan bases uh, is, is is sky high. And I, I didn't get a chance to go to one in Pitt. I went to one in Morgantown, which is where they're playing this one this week. That's correct. Yep. Oh, wow. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. The <laughs> energy, the – the I have not seen – I'll be honest. I've been to a lot of college football games. I've been to Baton Rouge, right, which uh, – loud, loudest stadium I've ever seen. But I have been there as well, yes. Yeah. And I've been to a bunch. I've been – I mean, I know me and you have both been to a ton. But as far as – passion and hatred i have not seen anything like the backyard brawl yeah so uh it, get, 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 and, tune and it. yeah there won't be any alcohol left there won't be any drops of alcohol left anywhere in and around the state of west virginia and in that area uh and again for west virginia they i saw them week one with penn state 
Uh, they struggled to stop the two-headed monster at running back. They did okay on the run defense. Garrett Green is not a good passing quarterback. Now, they did bash Duquesne for whatever that's worth uh, last week. Backyard brawl again is a pick em game. Uh, so let's see what happens for that one on Saturday night. Milan Puska Stadium in uh, in Morgantown, West Virginia, for Three Dog Thursday uh, purposes. We'll see what happens there. Who can forget the 2007 upset by Pitt when West Virginia was number two in the country? They were about to be in the BCS title game. Remember, they only picked the one versus two, and West yeah. Virginia had only to win that game basically against Pittsburgh, and they were going to be in the BCS title game. That year, there were six different teams that got all the way up to number two that either lost the week that they got name number two or within two weeks and Pitt beat West Virginia as the number two team in the country that year they still are smarting for that 15 years later in Morgantown now they get a chance at a little redemption Colby one more time that's why they got to play at the final week of the year because when you yes. play your arch rival and you might have a terrible season but you have that chance to ruin their season sure. it makes the rivalry that much better and I think you hit you hit on Garrett Green the quarterback of West Virginia he hasn't been an accurate passer in his two years of, you know, one and a half years of starting. I think it's going to rely on him because I think Narduzzi is going to stack the box. And I think Garrett Green's arm, WVU has one of the better offensive lines in the Big 12. So if they can, if they can, you know, do a little bit of play action, I think Dub V gets the win. And again, C.J. Donaldson, I saw him as a good running back, but you're right, Pitt will try to take that away. we got to get out of here on Three Dog Thursday. We're going to recap the picks in a moment. Give me a 15-second take. Colorado's got so much buzz. Coach Prime, they're a massive favorite with Colorado State. Even a peak at the Rams for Three Dog Thursday purposes in Boulder or stay away from that because you think Colorado is rolling the 3-0. and What's your take? Uh, I mean, I'll take, I'll take the points in Colorado state. It's up to like what, 23, 23 and a half. I know they're starting the red shirt freshman quarterback. Um, but you know, I, I guess once again, I was at mountain West media day. I think Norvell was saying he's so sick of hearing all the talk about the buffs. We're in the same state. And another thing is, uh, Colorado might get up big early, but the depth of the buffs is what I worry about come mid season. So if they get up big, look for them to potentially, you know, Rest Travis Hunter, rest Shador Sanders, and the, that's where I think you'll see a gigantic drop off. So, All right. uh, give me the twenty three, and I also like the over. And by the and by the way, it's looming for the Oregon and USC back to back matchups with Colorado coming up. But right now, they are sky high in Boulder, and rightfully so. They've got ten million people watched the game last week with Nebraska, an early game. This is a late game, eight Mountain Time, ten Eastern Time after Florida and Tennessee. That's prime time for Colby out on the uh, on the West Coast uh, again. By means of recap for Three Dog Thursday purposes, Colby is on three of them. Utah State Friday night. Uh, with Air Force, he also likes Houston in their first Big 12 game, taking on TCU as a home doggy, and he agrees with me on the Florida Gators. My other two are Illinois at home with Pitt, and we will also take Arizona State late night with Fresno State to maybe win the game as a three-point underdog in Tempe Saturday night. There's the six underdogs. Those are the plays. Plug away again on how they find you all the time with your content on the college football experience. Oh, I mean, look, uh, wherever podcasts can be found, just type in the college football experience. You can also find us on Twitter at TCE on SGPN and then on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Uh, we, co we cover every game. So check us out. Check them out five days a week. And again, on Saturday, it is a variable buffet of everything. You start a couple of hours before the games doing live content, YouTube, Twitter, uh, social media, et cetera. And they ju you just rock on through all the game. Watch the games. You got it all going at the SGPN headquarters. And then even after the games, uh, you're recapping them as well. I love this, man. Colby, it was great to catch up with you uh, midweek. Viva la underdogs here. I know you sharing this with me. We love the pooches. We love the hairy hounds, do we not? One more time, oh. we're ready to go with another week. Let's go, and I appreciate you getting me back on the show, man. It's always a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, the dogs are barking, man. I can hear from here. We love it. The Colby D is where you find him on social media. Again, follow this show at Three Dog Thursday. Find it on the Winning Cures Everything platforms, winningcureseverything.com, Winning Cures Everything, the YouTube page. Congratulations again to Gary and Jessica Seegers and baby Murphy Jean. She's on the planet now for week number three of college football. We're ready to go. And you've been watching and hearing all of it as part of Three Dog Thursday for Colby Dant. I'm TJ Reeves. Let's go get them, underdogs.